Chooks. 10 millimeter. Extravaganza! Welcome once again to Chooks 10 millimeter extravaganza, as it were. I have a few points to make, and there's no doubt, as Long Windy Road discussed recently, that 10 millimeter has gone full mainstream. I mean, it always has been for the last few years, but now it's they're putting out new guns in 10 millimeter, and they're ignoring 45 and 40. I feel like that's happening right now, but it's a wonderful day to be a 10 millimeter fan, outdoorsman enthusiast. And I just think it, it's excellent. We've got these new guns coming out, the Smith & Wesson M&P M2.0 or whatever, the 10 millimeter. It's already shipping, supposedly. Uh, none of the dealers that I know have got a hold of one, uh, but we might have one at some point to mess around with. But that that's out now. And then, of course, the, the Springfield OSP 3.8 inch Elite is my new kind of carry 10 millimeter. And uh, it's just amazing, but people think that uh, because I like that, I'm anti-Glock. This is my Glock 20. This is still uh, the nothing in the magazine and nothing in the chamber. This is still my number one woods gun when I'm out in the woods. It uh, I've got this GS chest holster. It's got this old, it shows you how old it is. It's got this old TRL H1 light, but this is my hiking, hunting, fishing, backup gun if I don't have a shotgun or a, a hunting rifle. You always want a hunting rifle or a shotgun first. That People uh, think that I think you should just go using this as a defensive weapon in the woods. This is like a secondary. You should fight your way to your rifle with this. But if it's all you have, uh, 10 millimeter has more than proven itself with bears for bear protection. But that Glock 20, that's still my number one. I, I had the XDM full size with the red dot. I actually like the Glock more. <laughs> that XDM is gone, the full size. The the new smaller one, I, of course, I really like for kind of urban carry, and I'll also carry that in the woods too. So, I mean, Springfield's making some good things, but I have a couple concerns about some of these new 10 millimeters. I could be totally off base. Okay, the first one has to do with the new Smith & Wesson M&P 10 millimeters that they have announced it looks awesome. I, I really want one because of the triggers alone. The If you have ever felt the M&P line of Smith & Wesson triggers with their 9 millimeters, it's incredible. Only thing I don't like about it is that horrible hook shape they have. But I, I can get over that. The reset and the trigger itself is pretty amazing compared to Glock. Uh, there's no question. It's way better than a stock Glock trigger. So just being able to have these options of these new 10 millimeters with the trigger... Uh, I'm very excited about the one major concern I have over the the new Smith & Wesson M&P 10 millimeter is they haven't announced anything that it's been torture tested. One of the smartest things that Springfield ever did when they first came out with the Hellcat and then they came out with the, the 10 millimeters is they torture tested it. They filmed whatever, 10,000 rounds, continuous shooting with no misfires or, or malfunctions and they did a, like an extra 10,000 too later on but I mean that was impressive that's a solid gun to me it's just as dependable as a Glock when they've tested it that vigorously with just making sure it's dependable and reliable that that was impressive I haven't heard that Smith & Wesson is doing the same thing and the thing that worries me is 10 millimeter is a finicky round it's the most powerful widely manufactured standard semi-auto round that, that you find in major guns today. And of all the Glock guns, the, the 10 millimeter line is the one that is can have problems. I had a Glock 21, so it was a complete dud. I, I changed everything in it. It wouldn't fire. I just got rid of it and got a brand new uh, Glock 20 from EDC Alaska. I'd ordered a brand new Gen 4 Glock 20. And I personally never had a malfunction with this. I've shot it a lot. Chuck claims that he had some malfunctions when he borrowed it for his test, but I think he limp wrists it or does something just to, just to sabotage me. But um, I personally have never had a malfunction with that Glock. It's incredible. So 
in the original days of the Glock 40 Smith & Wesson models, they had some serious problems. Everybody knows about that. Chuck had one in the 90s blow up in his hands when he was working at a range. So he was been very wary of them. But now he realizes that they're, they're made tougher and, and, you know, he shoots the 40 and the 10 millimeter and everything. But uh, there have been problems. And then I did that video of the Glock 20s blowing up. I'm not too worried about it. The, the chambers are not uh, <laughs> protected as much as some other guns. So I could see it could be an issue if you've got bad ammo or reloads or something. But, but it does happen. So my worry is that, uh, I mean, you can get a nine millimeter to, to run good, but I, my worry is what kind of testing have they done with the new uh, Smith & Wesson M&P 10 millimeters that it, it may have some problems because 10 millimeter is a high pressured finicky round that does not work in some firearms. So I hope I'm wrong. I totally hope I'm wrong. I want them to succeed. I, I would rather have Smith & Wesson uh, lead the 10 millimeter, this recent charge of just awesome uh, stuff they're putting out than Springfield, because of obvious reason what Springfield did. I would switch over to one of their Glock 19's compact size 10 millimeters it, with, the, with the red dot if it's reliable. So it just time will tell. We're just going to see how reliable these 10 millimeters are. I hope they are. Um, you know, I could be wrong. They could, they could be very reliable, and they probably are. We, who am I to say that they're not going to? That leads me into the next point, which is where are the Glock Gen 5 10 millimeters? Now, with the popularity of 10 millimeter, you'd think that Glock would have put out the Gen 5s already with the MOS option because everybody's going to just... I know I, I'm planning on getting one, and the 29, everybody, especially here in Alaska, is going to go crazy and get the new Glock Gen 5 because the Gen 5s, they, they have a better recoil system and the trigger is much better. If you f fired a Gen 4 Glock and then a Gen 5 Glock, you'll see how much better the trigger is on the Gen 5s. It's amazing. I'd be carrying a Gen 5 Glock 19. There's just no contest. The, the trigger is amazing. So why haven't they put them out? Well, one reason, which is probably the reason, is They've got so many government contracts that they're doing that they, they can just make a killing just on their 9mm Glock 19s and 17s that they're selling. There's no real reason for them to push out all these new and exciting products like Springfield is uh, just because they've got so many contracts and they, they, they can just make money on their current stock for whatever, decades. But I have heard uh, from the grapevine, I do have some connections here on the channel. Well, I've heard both sides. Some people say, oh, they're coming out. They're coming out. And people were saying that to me two years ago. I have inside information that this summer, the Glock 10 millimeter Gen 5 line is coming out. Well, guess what? It never did. The other side is what I'm hearing from some supposed insiders is that they had problems with the new Gen 5 platform because of the high pressures of the the 10 millimeter round, it wasn't meeting reliability specif specifications and uh, it was not working in the Gen 5s. Um, and that worries me a little bit because if that's the case, they're either going to have to do some more tweaking or they may not come out with any Gen 5 10 millimeters. But that is what I'm hearing. Please chime in the comments if you have any information or if you have heard the same thing. So, yeah, like I said, it's a good time to be a 10 millimeter fan, despite all the Springfield talk I've been doing with that new OSP. Yes, it's, it's very exciting. It's a cool little compact. This is still my Woods gun. This is the full size Glock 20, 10 millimeter, 15 plus one capacity with a chest holster. It, it's great. This is this is uh, kind of the gold standard of Alaska now, I feel. It's just are everywhere under every tree. You'll see an outdoorsman fishing with something almost exactly like that. Usually Kenai gunfighter chest holster without the light, but it's really nice to have the light as an option for late fall hunting or whatever. But anyways, uh, those are my two points. Worried about the Smith & Wesson 10 millimeters. Do you think that they're going to be reliable? And I'm also worried that the Gen 5 10 millimeter Glocks will not be released. I mean, where are they? Are they coming out after shot? 
time will tell. I'm, I'm uh, now I'm worried about it. So chime in the comments. What do you guys think? Long live 10 millimeter to the best millimeter. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe, and help me out on Patreon if you can. It's Chook, your friend in the field. My name is Chook. I like to trade my guns just for fun, but now I have none. Oh, look at Chuck my bear, but I don't care. I got a 10 millimeter. Chook's out adventures. Why don't you almost die every time? Guaranteed.